Hey everyone, I'm so excited to introduce Simon's new Peel Apart Background Stamp Plaid Builder. In today's video, I'll show you a couple of techniques. One really easy one, eh, I think they're both really easy, and we'll make a two for a card. So the first card is the first part of it, and it's a specialized plaid. And trust me, there's a million ways that you can do this plaid. And the second one utilizes the frame left over from the first one. So without any further ado, let's get started. And off we go. Again, I'm just really super excited about this new plaid builder. This along with the stripes builder, I, the possibilities are endless. But today I'm just gonna show you a couple of ways that I use this plaid builder. Now, um, first of all, and I'm gonna give you a couple of tips. Um, what I did was I have the, um, I have like this removable adhesive stuck all to the back of this so I can use it with my misty tool because I just I feel like I don't have the confidence to get it the first time trying to hold the paper down to the stamp I'm just not that graceful um, besides that I want my I want my stripes perfectly straight so um, what I'm using is I'm using the uh, grid marks on my misty tool and I'm just laying the clear part there along that line so I know that this is on there straight. So once I have that all nice and straight, I'm gonna grab my Simon Hurley Stark White cardstock and we're gonna start stamping. So I'm gonna lay my cardstock where I want it on the stamp. And this is a trick, by the way, I learned from Jennifer McGuire. And it's an amazing trick and everybody ought to try it. So I'm deciding how I want my plaid to look. So I'm laying it, because I'm gonna make, by the way, a really busy, I'm gonna make me a Tim Holtz plaid. <laughs> oh, I couldn't help myself. So I turn the Misty tool over on top of the paper and I have the scrapbook.com um, sticky mat inside of my Misty. So my paper stuck to it nicely, and now I'm ready to start stamping. And I'm going to do a pretty heavy plaid. So I'm going to start out here with my blues. And what I have here is I have the Simon Hurley um, No Diving. And I'm kind of both rubbing and tapping. Um, I, I find it almost impossible on a large stamp like that not to get marks, so I like to stamp more than once. But I'll stamp down to make sure I get plenty of ink and then I'll kind of smooth it over with the ink pad. As you can see, it's I'm having a little bit of difficulty filling that in. So I'm just kind of slowly going over it. And it's just, like I said, it's impossible not to get those smudgy marks. Or I don't know how you want to call them. So then I... I just kind of paint it on and tap and paint and tap and paint until I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm because I know I'm going to stamp it more than once, which is why I wanted to use my Misty tool. So I'm going to stamp it down the first time, try and get stuff out of my way. I'm going to use my pressure tool. This is my chunky tool. I've got my Halloween candy in here. <laughs> I haven't eaten it yet because I still have some in the bag. I'm one of those people that might eat one or two candies and then put them away. And it drives other people who eat the whole bag crazy. <laughs> and it drives me crazy when people eat the whole bag. So there's my first stamping and I know I want a second one. And I can see that you see that goober there on my um, paper. Well, that's because I have a goober on my stamp. I want to pay attention to that. Um... So learn from my mistakes or don't. I mean, this is supposed to look like a piece of fabric and what fabric doesn't have a little weird kind of knot in it? <laughs> well, I don't know. It depends where you shop, I guess. But eventually mine will, if it doesn't have one when I bought it, it's going to have one <laughs> by the time I've washed it a few times. Not to mention ink, paint, glue. <laughs> so I'm stamping down a second time. Again, slowly taking my time with the pressure tool. Really want to let that ink set in. And I'm using all Simon Hurley dye inks for this particular method. 
and you can see off there to the right where I've already created some plaids I and mean, you can be making plaids for days we're going to be coated in flannel and I'm good with that because there's other stuff that's going to go over it but you can see where I didn't get enough pressure it's fine you'll see <laughs> so I'm going to wipe off my stamp really well um, I'm going to be going in with the um, midnight snack so I'm not too worried about it but you know I just I don't want to get a bunch of <laughs> I don't want to make a big old mess I already got my hands dirty <laughs> earlier working on this so where is my ink let's see where did you go there you are ah oh yeah I wanted to show you this other trick. <laughs> I forgot. Sorry about that. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of creating a little jig here. So I know where my um, paper should be because I'm going to be flipping my paper over. But I want it in the same position. You don't have to. You can put it in any position you want. But this is just a little trick to help you kind of guide your stripes. So you see I'm just flipping my paper over and then I'm using my little jig which it's not doesn't have any height to it or anything it's just like a, a guide and then i'm going to go in with my midnight snack and i'm going to make some darker blue um, plaid i can see i need to re-ink my midnight snack and for this i'm just kind of rubbing the ink along and then i'm just going to lay the stamp down Use my pressure tool, taking my time, making sure I get plenty of pressure in all the spots. I think, um, you know, with the double-sided or with the removable adhesive that's on there, I think that the spots where it isn't, there's just a little bit less height. I mean, it's negligible, but that's what I kind of noticed. So I'm going to do one more time my stripes. I'm just kind of rubbing and tapping, making sure I kind of have an even coating of ink. I don't, I haven't tried this um, by putting water on it on top of it, but I'm not going to, not, not today anyway. I'm going to show you this easy method, and then I'm going to show you a different easy method. So one more time that side, putting even pressure on, taking my time. You get, I get in a big hurry because I'm so excited and I just want to make, 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 make because that's what I do, right? <laughs> and I'm recording this video um, this morning before I go to work. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and now clean off my stamp because I'll be flipping my paper again in another direction we're making a plaid right right now we just have stripes which i think the stripes are pretty cool too i wouldn't mind having a pair of pants with those stripes because <laughs> i like the variation of them so i'm just wiping the ink off um the excess ink off and i'm going to pick up my my paper here and sometimes if your paper doesn't want to come up you can just kind of pick up your little mat and then bend it a little and the paper will come up so now I want my stripes to go the other direction. So I'm going to, again, choose where I want them and lay my paper down onto the um, onto the stamp. Get it all adjusted, and I'm, I'm lining it up with one of the stripes because obviously it's shorter than the stamp. The stamp is 6x6, six six, so it's a good size stamp. Now I did the flip over trick again, and now I'm going to go in with woof. And I don't think it matters the color order. It might. It might. And I know I don't need to do the whole thing because, you know, I only need to cover that four, four and a quarter inches there. And just use my pressing tool and do again. Take my time. And I made this video premiere because it's a pretty long video, but I, I really wanted to showcase a couple of different things that you can create using this plaid maker. 
or this plaid builder, I should say. So good. I'm happy with that. So what I'm doing here is again, I'm placing my little, my little, um, scrapbook.com mint tape jig so I can flip this over and make sure it's in the same position. Again, it doesn't have to be in the same position. You can move it around all you want, but I do want to make sure that my stripes that I'm laying down are straight and I know this is straight. <laughs> so there's that. And I'll remove my jig. You don't have to, but what happens is, as you can see, I end up getting ink on it. And I'm going in now with the new Simon Hurley color in Shady. Great color. It's almost black, but not quite. And this is going to make some really bold, bold pattern on here. Um, what's cool about these stamps, too, these peel apart, is each one of these stripes peels off. And you, and you can, like, bend them, curve them, do whatever you need to do to uh, get the shape you want. But there, I'm happy with my plaid. So it's just kind of a rustic plaid. And here I go doing this, so I'll get ink on my fingers. <laughs> Let me wipe off my staff real quick. And I'm using the Ranger uh, Stamp Cleaner. I'm all about Ranger today. <laughs> I'm all about Ranger most of the time, so nothing new. And then I'm just using a little water to clean off my little my little uh, sticky mat. And it's lost most of its stick in the center, and that's okay. <laughs> it's fine. I have a I bought a the trio, so I've got a 12 by 12 that I can cut down. I don't think I'll be using it in my Cricut. So I'm going to take my stamps off on my Misty now because we're going to do a different technique. And I'm just going to lay this on the paper so you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to choose some of these stripes. Meeny, meeny, miny, mo. Which ones do I want? This is what's so fun about this set. I'm going to pull out the ones I want. Okay, I want that one. And let's see, I think I want this wide one with the lines going through. It reminds me of blue jeans. And then this other little one with the three small little lines. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make a more refined plaid. So still using my Misty tool, because I'm going to be using it for positioning. I am going to lay these down and I'm going to line them up. I'm going to do them... You know, thinking about where my card is going to be, I'm, I want it, per, my card's going to be pretty much in the middle. So I want these stripes to be offset, you know, down lower, higher. You'll see. <laughs> You'll see. So I'm using my Misty tool, and there's my gray hair. Sorry about that. Um, I want to, I have to get close so I can see it. And making sure that these little guys are lined up. And I, I, I'll admit, they're, it's fidgety to line these up because they're so small and my fingers are so big. <laughs> but what I kind of do is I kind of pull on either end so it's straight, and then I try to stick down the end, and it kind of will straighten it out if it sticks down. <laughs> Come on, little guy. There we go. Stay. <laughs> Again, they can be a little fidgety because they're, th they're so thin. If you are really having issues with it, you can put a little bit of that um, adhesive, that um, removable adhesive on there, and it'll stay where you put it. But I don't really feel like I need to do that. I'm just going to fiddle with it until I get it right. Because I have confidence that I can. Or get it close enough. It does not have to be perfect. I mean, it's a handmade card, right? But if you're anything like me, I've got a little bit of kind of OCD about things being straight. Either straight or all the way crooked. <laughs> there we go. I'm happy with that. You won't even notice that tiny little bit of a wave on there. So I'm going to grab my paper again, and again, I'm using the St uh, Simon Hurley Stark White Cardstock and Simon Hurley inks, uh, mostly. <laughs> and I'm going to kind of position this where I want it, just like I did before the, this I call the Jennifer McGuire trick. Now, I don't know if she invented it, but 
she showed it to me, so it's hers in my mind. <laughs> and now I've got my card exactly where I want it. And I'm going to grab my Game Over. This is one of my favorite ink colors it's of Simon's. Well, it's very hard to choose a favorite, actually, but as reds go, and red is my favorite color, it's my favorite. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that down. I'm going to use my pressure tool. And I don't want to press too hard, but you know, I want to give it enough pressure that the stamp, all the whole stamp meets the paper. So I'll just kind of go back and forth with it. Pick it up. I'm happy with it. Now I need to make a jig. So I'll grab my mint tape if I can find it. Well, you guys know how that goes. Oh, you know, I think I'm going to take a, a second stamping here because I see some skippity parts. So I want to make sure that I get those covered. Just right, th right in there where I didn't get enough pressure. Again, with large stamps, you really have to take your time with them and, and st a lot of times stamp them multiple times. And that's just been my experience um, working with stamps. And, and not that I have a lot of experience, it's only been about two years, but in my two years experience, large stamps take more work. So here you see me creating my little jig and of course getting ink on my fingers because yeah, that's what I do. There we go. And now I want to flip my paper over. And I'm just going to line it up with the pieces of tape I laid on there. And I'm going to take off the tape because I have it where I want it. And I'm going to stamp again. So we're basically doing the same exact thing we did with the entire block. Only now we're just doing with parts of it in certain places. Make sure I get it good and inked up so I don't have to stamp it twice. But I might. You never know. You never know. I'm going to go hit it with my pressure tool. Just using a tool like this helps it kind of glide along a little bit. And I'm good with that. I probably have a little maybe too much ink there, but that's fine. I, stu I have some parts that are skippy and I have some parts that are heavy. So I'm just going to stamp it again. And using my pressure tool again. I'm happy with that. So what I have to do now is I have to clean off my stamps because now I'm going to be turning my paper at 90 degrees. Um, and I'll tell you, here's a tip. Make sure your stamps are completely clean before you do this step because if you don't get it where you want it, oh, it's going to leave an impression and you'll see here in a minute. It's a good thing I got it where I wanted it. Now I got that one's a little wet now, so let me get it straightened back out. Okay, now I'm going to do the paper trick again, and I'm going to lay my paper down, and I'm lining it up with the grid on my Misty so that I know that it's straight. Just going to lay that like that, and then flip my Misty over, and there we go. I have my positioning. So, again, going to go in with the same with the game over. And go ahead and stamp that down. You see where it left an impression? So it's a good thing it's where I wanted it. <laughs> Red ink has some real stay power. <laughs> there we go. I'm happy with that. I love it. Now I'm going to place my little jig. It doesn't have to be a lot, and it doesn't have to be mint tape. It could be, you know, washi tape, whatever you have. 
I'm just lining my paper up. There we go. And I'll go ahead and stamp this part down. And oops, I moved it. Let's get it back on there. That part doesn't really matter because it sticks way over. And we'll get the good pressure on here. And sorry about that, had a little interruption. Mike slammed the window on his finger trying to open it. Okay, good, happy with that. Let's go ahead and pull it out. I'm gonna just set that aside and do a little cleanup here because red ink, yeah. And the ink cleans off really easily from the little uh, sticky mat. I'm just gonna move my stamps out of the way and just wipe my misty down because I may need it again. You never know. And I do want to heat set this a little bit so I'm sure the ink's dry before I start cutting on it. And I'm going to cut it down quite a bit. You'll see. Um, oh yeah, you know what? I almost forgot. I'm trying to put, I want to put some gold stripes on here too. So I'm looking for my Simon Hurley um, long stamping tool. This is the longer acrylic block that he came out with recently. And I want to put some gold stripes on here. So I'm going to pick another stripe. Gosh, I made this video last night and I already forgot what I was doing. Let me try and put one of these back here for a minute. Go ahead and get more ink on my fingers. Well, what stripe do I want? Picking the stripes is the hardest part. <laughs> Let me see here. And do I want that one? No, I want this one. Yeah, we'll go with this one. Commit already. And I'm going to use that grid line there on the stamping um, acrylic block to get my stamp straight. And for this, I'm going to actually use some gold delicata ink. Um, because I want that gold, you know, I want it gold. I want that little bit of shimmer that the Delicata gives. So I'm just getting my ink down on the stamp. And I like to put the lid on right away because this I don't want it to dry out. I have, I have re-inker. I love this ink. And I'm just going to select where I want it. And there goes my head in your way. So sorry about that. There we go. And I'm just going to stamp it down. And try not to rock it, because if you get ink on the side of the stamp, that ink's going to transfer. Um, but sometimes the, the line is so, so thin, you just have to be really careful with it. And that's me wiping, trying to wipe my fingers off here. Then I'm going to go in and so this I'm not going to use my stamping platform. I'm just going to eyeball it because they are so light in color. And I'm just basically trying to get it in between those two end ones. So you see I'm pushing more gently here. You probably can't see it in this video, but um, on the first one I did, I rocked it and got a little bit on the edge. That's fine. I'm not mad. You could even go so far as to heat emboss this if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to. I'm happy with it the way it is. Just carefully. With this large block, it's easy to see the entire space that you're trying to cover instead of having your hands in the way. And we'll get that last one. Then I'm going to heat set it. <laughs> yes, I am. And again, sorry if my head gets in the way, but I have to be able to see. There we go. Now I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to be putting something in the center of this, and I am going to be trimming it down. So I don't need a bunch of stripes in the center. I could put one if I wanted to. And But I'm not going to. Maybe next time. 
tell you what, like I said, a million and one combos that you can do to get the effect that you want. So, yeah, the Delicata is a, um, I think it's a pigment, so it takes a little bit longer to dry, and I don't want to smear it. <laughs> so I'm going to use a um, die to cut this out, and this is a stitched die. And I'm going to just kind of eyeball and get it, you know, where I have a good half inch around, all the way around the outside. Because remember, this is a twofer, and I'm going to be using that outside as well. And I just want it straight. So I'll use some of my mint tape to hold it down once I have it where I want it. And I'll run that through my Vagabond. I'll be back in a second. All right, we've got that run through. Just pulling it out, pulling the tape off carefully. There I have my centerpiece. And I think that, and there I've got my frame. Pretty cool, huh? So we'll be making a twofer. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put this down on a craft card base I believe I'll use today. And I'm looking here for is, I don't know. Sometimes I'm looking for something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, yeah. I was looking for a piece of paper, and but here it is. Um, and I'm just going pad to paper because I want to mat this little piece. And I want to mat it in, you know, the same color. So I'm just taking my Game Over ink pad directly to my paper. And then I'll glue down my plaid piece. And I'm just going to use a little bit of my um, art glitter glue. And I'm just leaving about an eighth of an inch border. This is pretty good glue. It sticks pretty fast. Even if, you know, obviously my ink's still a little bit wet. Although, if you forget and leave the pin off too often, the that little metal tip starts to get funky on you. But sometimes I forget. The other night, um, I was working with my hot glue gun because I'm working on a really big project. And I hang it on a hook when I'm not using it. And I forgot about it, left it on overnight. I'm just thankful I didn't burn my house down. Sorry about that. Yet another interruption. As I was saying, I'm lucky I didn't burn my house down. I didn't even discover it until... The afternoon when I reached over to grab something, and you see I'm using a paper towel because I obviously have ink all over my hands and I just don't want to mess up any of my white. Um, so I have another um, hot glue gun. I've just been too lazy to get it out that has an auto shut off and I think that's going to be important in my crafting life <laughs> as I get older and more for forgetful. It was, I mean, it didn't burn anything down, but it was definitely a little melty. <laughs> it's a good thing when I caught it when I did. And I'll save that little piece of paper for something else. Who knows what, but I don't like to waste paper at all. I'm just going to use my paper towel to make sure that that's attached firmly to the little mat piece. And then I will go ahead and stick this down. And I'm going to use craft card stock. You can use white. You can make another red piece whatever your heart's desire. I see a lot of people use these glue gun thingies. I don't have one. I think you call it an ATG. I keep meaning to buy one and then, oh look, squirrel, I forget. All right, so I'm happy with my placement there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just Slap a cinnamon on there, as my friend Nancy likes to say. And this is one that I made, and I couldn't possibly tell you where it came from. Um, I bought those back before I knew I should save this kind of information. Um, but I've got it layered up, so I've got three layers of the shadow, and I've got three layers of the actual words, so it's nice, nice and, no, not demented. It's got dimension. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously, words. They're hard. 
So I'm just gonna kind of put a little pressure on that, make sure it's good and stuck down. And then I'm gonna use my Pops of Color. I got this from scrapbook.com. And I like to test it first on the paper. And oops, I forgot. They put a little stopper in there. So you can just twist this off. And I'm just gonna grab a paper towel and pull that little stopper out. And it comes out easily, it's not like fighting <laughs> like when you're trying to get the mustard open. <laughs> so as I said, I like to test out a couple of dots off to the side to make sure there's no air bubbles inside. And I'm going to wipe my dots off so I don't accidentally run my card through them. And I'm just going to place little dots all around the little joy. And this is a very sparkly color. I love it. And I may have gone a little crazy with it, but that's all right. <laughs> I like it. Um, the only thing is, you know, you have to set it aside to dry and not be absent-minded like I am and drop things on it or touch it. Okay, I'm happy with my placement of my little sparkly dots. And we'll set that aside and work on our card number two. So here's card number one. And here's our frame, and I'm going to cut that frame down even more. Um, so I'm going to use the same stitched. It's a stitched rectangle. I have no idea where it came from. Again, I've had it longer than I knew I should be saving this kind of information. So it's from my stash. And I'm going to get it on there as straight as possible. I'm not too worried about it. But I do want to cut that out so that it's a frame inside of a frame, sort of-ish, like. So there we go. We've got that cut out. And there's this tiny piece that we could still use for another project if we wanted to. But right now we're going to focus on this one. And I am going to glue that down to a white card base. Bear with me while I look for my white card base. I need to make more card bases. That's sometimes before work, that's what I do. I'll sit there and make card bases. But I also want to um, I want to make a background here. And so I'm going to use Simon Hurley Stitch Snowflake Stamp. This is a background peel apart stamp as well. But I'm going to use the whole stamp. And this one I feel confident um, doing paper to stamp. So, and I'm going to use Ranger's Princess Gold Embossing Powder. I'm going to just eh, go over my paper a little and maybe throw it, I don't know, <laughs> with the embossing powder. Um, not the embossing powder, the um, anti-static powder, that's what it's called. And then I'm going to grab my Versamark ink. Where are you, Versamark ink? <laughs> There she is. And this is a really dirty pad, so I'm, I'm not going to let you see it. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. That gold, that ranger gold, princess gold, or any of the ranger, you know, opaque type um, embossing powders will cover it. I've even embossed gold over black before. And I know I don't need to do the whole thing. And I'm moving, though, I'm moving my paper because it's slippy sliding around on me. So I want it want it to grip and stay fairly still while I'm putting down a pretty heavy application of the Versamark. And this stuff is sticky. <laughs> uh, I use it a lot too. So I'm just going to select where I want it to go and I'm going to lay my paper down. And for this I will use my pressure tool. And just hang on to the paper on one side and put the pressure on the other side, vice versa. Just want to kind of hold on to my paper while I'm doing it so that I don't accidentally make them jump. And there I'm happy with the snowflake application. So I'll go ahead and pour the gold embossing powder over it. And I want to grab a pair of tweezers, I think, to try and hold this. I think I'm going to grab my Cricut tweezers, um, other things that I have trouble finding in my craft room. Just kind of hold it right there. 
so I don't burn my fingers, which I end up not holding it in after all because I've got my little silicone mat underneath and it grips everything. So I'm just going to tap off the excess, make sure it's good and coated, and put away my embossing powder. There we go. Now let's go ahead and heat emboss this. The, something so satisfying about heat embossing gold, and especially with these snowflakes. Oh, they're so pretty. It's probably my favorite thing that Simon came out with last year. Well, you know me, I have a trouble picking favorites, but it's more used than the others. Let's put it that way. And I am going to trim that down also with the, um, with the stitched, uh, rectangle die. Uh, yep, I got that word out. And I'm just selecting where I want, you know, where I want to see my snowflakes mostly. And I'll go ahead and cut this down because I want to make this um, a raised portion above my framed portion. So now it's time to go ahead and put this all together. So I've got my white card base and I've got my little frame. And my card base is being funky on me because I never did the, uh, I never smushed it down with my bone folder. So let's go ahead and do that real quick so it's not all poking up. And I'm going to glue the frame straight down. I'm not going to pop it up at all. And I realize that I am way zoomed in here. Sorry about that. But at least I'm in frame. <laughs> And here my art glitter glue wants to go funky on me again. All you have to do is poke it with your little tool. And that um, friend of mine sent me that. Uh, Gloria Wolf, a lady named Gloria Wolf makes them. And um, another friend of mine purchased from her and sent it to me. That was so sweet. I also have one that Nancy gave me, but I bent the pin up so bad. So I want to press that down, but I don't want to press it down with my dirty hands. So I'm going to grab a piece of paper towel and press down with the paper towel. And that also helps to absorb any excess ink that might kind of ooze out. And then I'm just going to pop this little piece up. And I'll be using foam tape to pop it up. So here's me looking for my foam tape. Plus, I'm also thinking, do I want to just use a whole piece of fun foam or do I want to use foam tape? But I go for the foam tape. Mostly because I don't feel like looking for my fun foam. Usually I keep it in a certain spot, but I ran out of that spot. And so I have my surplus kind of buried. If you've seen my craft room and parts of it, there's just stuff that's buried that you have to take everything out of the way to get to. You can't even get in my closet. Um, I don't even remember what's in that closet, but I will have to be getting into it because my Christmas stuff's in there. I know that for a fact. <laughs> I do not know what else is in there. I forgot. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of lay this down right over top so it's popped up over the frame. I like it with the plaid and then I have this little snowflake that I made mm, I don't know a few days ago and I ended up not using it but it's not the color I want so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut another one out and I'm gonna use my delicata ink to make the color I want so I want gold and I don't I probably have gold paper somewhere around here but again it's that whole mm -mm. So this works just fine. I'm just gonna heat set it a little bit um, so that when I run it through my die cutting machine, the paper doesn't get stuck to this intricate little die. That's a Sizzix Tim Holtz die, by the way. So what I've done is I've taken and stuck that on top of that. So we've got probably a five layer snowflake going there. And I'm gonna glue that down to the center I'm not going to bother with getting glue all over the whole thing. I don't need the whole thing glued down. I just need I just need the middle. And I'm kind of eyeballing it just to make sure it's kind of even on there. And then I'm going to press down. And all we need is a sentiment. And I'm going to be using um, 
a sentiment from Simon's Christmas Silhouettes. And I want to, I think I'm going to use Sending Friendly Flurries. That's, I have the worst time making up my mind about sentiments. I'm just, I don't know, that's my, that's my kind of downfall is sentiments. Just, eh, whatever, let me see here. What do I want to say? All is calm, all is bright? No, I don't think that's going to work. Oh, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and go for the Sending Friendly Flurry since it is a snowflake with snowflakes on it. So I'll go ahead and get that stamp out. I regret not getting the sweater deer last year. I'll probably get them this year if Ranger still has them. So I'm going to use my... Um, my the long thin Simon Hurley stamping acrylic block here and um, so that I have good control and so I can see where I'm stamping and I want to stamp this down I'll just stamp it on a piece of uh, Simon Hurley stark white cardstock and I'm gonna go ahead and use the game over so I thought about doing black but I decided ultimately the game over will be fine and it stamps out perfectly like that's a miracle for me but you just have to be careful that you don't rock your stamp. Again, I'm pretty new to stamping, and if there hadn't been stamping platforms, I would have never been here. <laughs> no. So I'm going to pop that up on a little piece of foam tape. And I'm just going to lay it across the middle of the snowflake. And we'll be sending friendly flurries. Well, I hope you guys like this video and this premiere. I will be um, doing a couple of more videos with a couple more of Simon's cool new release. Um, so be looking for those. Meanwhile, I thank you for stopping by. If you like this video, I appreciate if you give me a thumbs up. And just to read, we use the uh, Peel Apart Background Builder, uh, Plaid Builder, Background Stamp Plaid Builder. Bye. Thank you.